boys and girls, I am here to read with you American's Champion Swim Swimmer, a biography about Gertrude Ederly. It's written by David A. Adler and illustrated by Terry Widener. The question that we're going to be thinking about while we're listening today is what unique traits does it take to be the first to do something? Let's find out. In 1906, women were kept out of many clubs and restaurants. In most states, they were not allowed to vote. Many people felt a woman's place was in the home, but Gertrude Ederly's place was in the water. Gertrude Ederly was born on October 23, 1906. She was the third of six children and was raised in New York City, where she lived in an apartment next to her father's butcher shop. Her family called her Gertie. Most everyone else called her Trudy. Trudy spent her early years playing on the sidewalks of New York. It wasn't until she was seven that she had her first adventure in the water. While visiting her grandmother in Germany, Trudy fell into a pond and nearly drowned. After that near disaster, Trudy's father was determined to teach her to swim. For her first lesson, he tied one end of a rope to Trudy's waist and held on to the other end. He put Trudy into a river and told her to paddle like a dog. Trudy mastered the dog paddle. She joined her older sister Margaret and the other children in the water and copied their strokes. Soon, Trudy swam better than any of them. Okay, first thing I want you to think about. I want you to find, since we're working on fact and opinion, on page 126, I want you to find one fact and one opinion. Remember, a fact can be proven. We can look it up, see if it's true. And an opinion is how someone feels or a judgment. Okay, go ahead and pause. One fact I found Gertrude Ederly was born on October 23rd, 1906. It's a fact. I can research it. I can look it up. A uh, statement of opinion, I'm going to go to the top paragraph, and I found in the last sentence, many, many people felt a woman's place was in the home. This is definitely how someone feels about something or a judgment about a group of people. And the word felt is a kind of, is, is a clue word that tells me that this is an opinion. It's a feeling word. Trudy spent, oh, I'm not going to read that again. I've made that mistake a couple of times. What do you think the author means when he says that Gertrude Adderley's place was in the water? Go ahead and pause. Well, I think he says that she was born to be a swimmer, not someone who was going to stay home no matter what other people thought. From that summer on, it was hard to keep Trudy out of the water. She loved to swim. At the age of 13, she became a member of the New York Women's Swimming Association and took lessons there. At 15, Trudy won her first big race. The next year, she attempted to be the first woman to swim the more than 17 miles from Lower Manhattan to Sandy Hook, New Jersey. When Trudy slowed down, her sister Margaret yelled, Get going, lazy bones! And Trudy did. She finished in just over seven hours, and she beat the men's record. So that was 17 miles in swimming, and she beat the men's record. So at this point, people were, be were beginning to notice Gertrude Ederly. Newspapers described her as a courageous, determined, modest, and poised. They called her the most perfect swimmer. Trudy's mother said she was just a plain home girl. In 1924, this plain home girl was good enough to make the U.S. Olympic team. Trudy won three medals at the Games in Paris. Her team won more points than all the other country's swimming teams combined. By 1925, Trudy had set 29 U.S. and world records. She was determined to take on the ultimate challenge, the English Channel. Many had tried to swim the more than 20, 20 mile wide body of cold, rough water that separates England from France, but only five men and no women had ever made it all the way across. So, the gen okay, I'm going to make a generalization and I want you to help me find some support for this comment. Okay, so the generalization that Gertrude Ederly was courageous. I made a general statement. What is some proof that she was courageous? Go ahead and pause and see if you can find some support for that statement. Okay, well, I think on page 128, it says she attempted and succeeded at being the first woman to swim from lower Manhattan to Sandy Hook, New Jersey. 
And on page 129, the author says she was determined to swim the English Channel, even though only five men and no women had ever done that before. Um, many people were sure Trudy couldn't do it. A newspaper editorial declared that Trudy wouldn't make it and that women must admit that they would remain forever the weaker sex. It didn't matter to Trudy what people said or wrote. She was going to swim the channel. She didn't care about all of that. Early in the morning on August 18th, 1925, Trudy stepped into the water at Cape Grenoble, France, she, the starting point for the swim. For almost nine hours, she fought the strong current. Then, when Trudy had less than seven miles to go, her trainer thought she had swallowed too much water and pulled her, pulled her crying from the sea. Trudy did not give up on her dream. She found a new trainer, and a year later, on Friday, August 6, 1926, she was ready to try again. Trudy wore a red bathing cap and a two-piece bathing suit and goggles that she and her sister Margaret had designed. To protect her from the icy cold water, Margaret coated Trudy with lanolin and heavy grease. The greasing took a long time. Too cold, too long for Trudy. For heaven's sakes, she complained. Let's get started. So she was getting a little antsy to get started. Now I want you to think about polar bears and other Arctic animals that have that thick layer of fat. What does that protect them against? Well, that's part of the reason why they can swim in such cold water because they have that thick coat of insulation, that blubber. So what um, Margaret was putting all over Trudy was like a layer of fat. That's what grease is. She was smearing her with some grease to kind of protect her skin from that cold water so that she would stay warmer in while she was swimming. Um, let's see. One, okay, page 130. We're going to go up to the second paragraph. And the last sentence in that second paragraph, she was going to swim the channel. Now, there are two meanings for the word channel. One means um, channels like on a radio or on a TV. Is that this kind of channel? Is that what they mean by that? Well, if I read the sentence, she was going to swim the channel. I know it's not a TV station, so it must be a body of water. And that is what the English Channel was. It was a body of water between France and um, Europe. <clears throat> Finally, at a little past seven in the morning, she stepped into the water. Gee, but it's cold, Trudy said. Trudy's father, her sister Margaret, her trainer, and a few other swimmers were on board a tugboat named Alsace. The boat would accompany Trudy to make sure she didn't get lost in the fog and was safe from jellyfish, sharks, and the channel's powerful currents. There was a second boat, too, with reporters and photographers on board. As the Alsace bobbed up and down in the choppy water, Margaret wrote in chalk on the side of the boat. This way, old kid! She drew an arrow that pointed to Europe. If you look at page 133, you can see the writing on the side of the boat there. To entertain Trudy, Margaret and some of the others sang American songs, including the Star Spangled Banner and East Side, West Side. Trudy said the songs kept her brain and spirit good. At first, the sea was calm. Trudy swam so fast that her trainer was afraid she would tire herself out. He ordered her to slow down. Trudy refused. At about 10.30 in the morning, Trudy had her first meal. She floated on her back and ate chicken and drank beef broth. A while later, she ate chocolate and chewed on sugar cubes. Then she swam on. So she was keeping up her energy. What questions at this point might you have on some of these pages? What are some things that you're wondering about? Go ahead and pause. Well, I might be wondering who sailed on the boat of the Alsace. Now, I've seen a couple of videos, and it looked like there were lots of people on the boat, not just her family. And I want to know if um, having her family around her helped her with this swim. At about 1.30 in the afternoon, it started to rain. A strong wind stirred the water. For a while, Trudy would swim forward a few feet, only to be pulled back twice as far. That had to be frustrating. By 6 o'clock, the tide was stronger. The waves were 20 feet high. 
the rough water made the people aboard the Alsace and the news boat seasick. Trudy's trainer was sure she couldn't finish the swim. He told her to give up. No, no, Trudy yelled over the sound of the waves. She kept swimming. In the next few hours, the rain and wind became stronger and the sea rougher. At times, the rough water pulled the boats away, out of Trudy's sight. She was scared. It was eerie being out there all alone. Now Trudy began to have trouble kicking in the water. When the Alsace came close again, Trudy said her left leg had become stiff. Her trainer was frightened for her. He yelled, you must come out. What do you think Trudy's going to do? Right. I think she's going to keep swimming. What for? Trudy shouted and kept swimming. Trudy continued to fight the tide and the constant stinging spray of water in her face. She knew she would either swim the channel or drown. As Trudy neared Kingstown on the coast of England, she saw thousands of people gather to greet her. They lit flares to guide her to shore. At about 9.40 at night, after more than 14 hours in the water, Trudy's feet touched land. Hundreds of people, fully dressed, waited in the water to greet her. When she reached the shore, her father hugged Trudy and wrapped her in a warm robe. I knew if it could be done, it had to be done, and I did it. Trudy said after she got ashore, all the women of the world will celebrate. Trudy swam the channel in just 14 hours and 31 minutes. She beat the men's record by almost two hours. So only five people had actually made it across. All were men, and she beat the record by two hours. That's awesome. In newspapers across the world, Trudy's swim was called history-making. Reporters declared that the myth that women are the weaker sex was shattered and shattered forever. Trudy sailed home abroad the SS Bergeria, oh my goodness, sorry guys, Bergeria. After six days at sea, the ship entered New York Harbor. Two airplanes circled and tipped their wings to greet Trudy. People on boats of all kinds rang their bells and tooted their horns to salute her. Fog horns sounded. Trudy climbed into an open car for a parade of Lower Broadway. An estimated two million people, many of them women, stood and cheered. They threw scraps of newspaper, ticker tape, pages torn from telephone books, and rolls of toilet paper. When her car arrived at the New York City Hall, Mayor Jimmy Walker praised Trudy for her courage, grace, and athletic prowess. American women, he said, have ever added to the glory of our nation. President Calvin Coolidge sent a message that was read at the ceremony. He called Trudy America's best girl, and she was. Gertrude Utterly had become a beacon of strength to girls and women everywhere. So two questions for you. The first one. The last sentence on page 139, Gertrude Ederle had become a beacon of strength to girls and women everywhere. How do you think, what is the author's opinion of Trudy? Just based on that last sentence there. Okay, go ahead and pause and think about that. Okay, I think that this shows how the author thinks Trudy is a role model for girls and women. Okay, and then last question, let's think about our, our weekly question of what unique traits does it take to be the first to do something? Now, Gertrude was the first woman to cross the English Channel and did it in fewer hours than the previous winners, or not, I can't say winners, but previous people who had done that challenge. So what do you think um, Trudy, what characteristics do you think Trudy possessed that made that possible? Okay, I'm going to leave you with that question. Um, go on over to the video that I've included. This will give you an idea of um, what Gertrude looked like. Um, it shows her swimming in the channel and um, the boats and parts of the celebration. So go ahead and check that out and we'll be reading.